So now that we've covered most everything there is to cover on the stock screen, uh, one element that we need to talk about more is value in stock and average cost. Now, what's going on here is actually much more complicated than what it looks like on the outside. Um, this is a topic that is related to uh, costing methodologies. So every inventory management software, uh, manufacturing ERP systems, they're using different types of costing methodologies. Much of this is dependent on the type of business you have. Um, the main goal for any business is to have a real-time overview of what does something cost? How much did I spend on that in terms of uh, making payments to suppliers, uh, paying people salaries to make something, uh, machine running costs and overhead for the products I make, and then having a clear understanding of what something costs also gives you a clear understanding of how you need to price it. So that way it's balanced with the market in which you sell. And then you have a good enough margin to justify, um, you know, carrying your business forward and, and, and also making a profit as that is the bread and butter of any business. So it is the single most important thing to understand when it comes to uh, making informed business decisions. So costing methodologies in Katana, um, there are many out there, uh, such as like standard costing, uh, FIFO, job costing, um, weighted average costing. What Katana uses is something called moving average cost. And this costing methodology operates on a very simple formula. That formula is the value in stock of all of the items, that particular item, divided by its total in stock quantity gives you something called a moving average cost. And one of the advantages of this costing methodology is firstly, it's relatively simple to process and it also takes into account current inventory. So uh, it's a more um, realistic cost for uh, items that you have bought in the recent history. A lot of um, other softwares will use something like uh, weighted average costing, which is more consistent in a long period of time, but it isn't as accurate in a short period of time. So it's the only only advantage and disadvantage. The consistency element is, is much more um, efficient for certain industries that have like slower turnarounds. But if you are more kind of just in time manufacturer or you have short lead times, then moving average cost is definitely preferred, especially if you're dealing with perishable goods, it's, it's one of the preferred methodologies too. Um, but then again, uh, it, it all comes down to uh, what it is that you're looking for in your business. So I guess to kind of kick this off, I want to demonstrate how it works. Um, it actually works all the way from the purchase order to the completion of a sales order. So it goes through PO being created with its particular cost. Then it gets accepted to inventory. Then it's used in manufacturing. And then a product has more value added to it. And then it gets sent out as cost of goods sold when a sales order is sent. And so understanding that process is, um, is very important in terms of like wrapping your head around how costing works in the Katana platform. But for now, since we're dealing with the stock screen, the main goal uh, for this video is to just show you a simple example of how that cal cost calculation changes as you are uh, adding value to your inventory or stock screen. So to do this, what I am going to do is I'm going to add a new material item where I have zero items of that in stock. So I'll go ahead and take care of that real quick. Okay, so that's it real quick. Um, so what I've done here is I've added a new variant of the paint material and it's red and it costs a default purchase price of 10 US dollars. So what I'll do next is I'm going to make two purchase orders and we will add this item to those purchase orders and bring it into inventory. Currently there is no inventory for this item so it's going to stay on the stock screen materials tab under the red paint that there is zero value in stock and zero units in stock. So uh, using the quick add option we'll generate a quick purchase order we'll make two of them and this is where I want to show you how the moving average cost works. So we're going to keep it very simple just by creating two stock movements. So a paint supplier 
although we haven't covered purchase orders yet, we will get that into the next video series where we'll go into the details, but I'll just keep it simple for this time around to show you how it works. So we add the red paint here. And so what we'll do is we'll buy one liter of red paint for $10. And then we'll buy another purchase order of red paint. But the difference I want to show you here is that instead of buying one liter for $10, we'll just double the price and buy it for $20. Okay, so on the stock screen, what you will see here is that for the red material, I've got the red material here, I've got two liters expected to arrive. Now, the first thing that happens is as it relates to your purchasing activity, what you're actually doing is you're taking cash from your bank account, you're sending it to your supplier, and your supplier is sending you $10 worth of materials. So that's pretty much it. You're basically trading cash for value asset. So stock is an asset and uh, an asset is a physical good uh, since you exchanged cash from your cash account for it. And now you've exchanged it for $10 worth of um, material. So when you do that transaction by accepting a purchase order, by receiving it. Then when we head to the stock screen and we notice that the red item is now in stock, you can see that the expected quantity dropped by one and then the in stock quantity increased by one. And then the total value in stock is what we paid. So the total value in stock that we paid is 10 US dollars and the average cost is $10 per liter. And the way that this average cost is calculated is by dividing your total value in stock by your total in stock quantity, which will give you the average cost of that item at this very moment in time. So what's going to happen here is as I'm adding material to stock by accepting purchase orders or making stock adjustments or doing stock transfers, this moving average cost will possibly fluctuate, or if all of those items continue to remain the same, it will just stay the same. And um, and to do this, for example, I would simply uh, accept the other purchase order, which is a little different because that purchase order from the paint supplier is one liter for $20. So this is what happens. I receive that order for $20 and it goes into my stock. And the material here will recalculate for the red paint a moving average cost of $15. And so what's happened is when I mark that PO as received, I actually paid $20 for that one liter. I now have a total of two liters in stock. The first liter I paid 10 bucks for, the second one I paid 20 bucks for, which gives me a total of $30 worth of inventory. And then whenever I'm going to use my material in the future, which, which would be the red paint to make, let's say, a red table uh, from the manufacturing perspective, then the inventory of the red paint is going to be taken out at $15 per liter because that is the moving average cost of 30 US dollars divided by two equals 15. And so when you generate the cost of an item in inventory, it's very evenly distributed using the moving average methodology. And that single unit that you have today, which becomes the ingredient for the next item, which is a product, so when I take one liter of material from stock, the in-stock quantity will drop down from two to one here. And then this, and then 15 US dollars worth of inventory will leave from my value in stock and be transferred to the product cost, the product material cost. And that's how Katana does costing from the material side all the way up the chain through products. So we'll cover products a little bit more as we go deeper into the costing methodologies, but do keep in mind that this is how it works for materials. It also works the exact same way. So purchase orders that influence cost of a material, manufacturing orders influence the cost of a product and the material travels, boom. And then the 
pro uh, the operations that you have generated cost for also travel to the product level. And that's how cost travels through the inventory system as you're manufacturing.